the Lord. It's nice to be a part of the Sunday school, you know. At least some who have been thinking or having that fear, how will I get a job? Or thinking of a sickness. I'm sure today's Sunday school has built you up a, a, a little bit more. That no, it is not that way. I will follow God's way. Thank you, Father. Let's stand up and pray. Um, can we open to Isaiah 41, verse 10? Isaiah 41, verse 10. We are going to use this to pray this morning. And the, and the first thing is, it say, fear not. So we are going to pray. You and I, we have to pray on our own. Let us pray that everything that has always bring fear into me. Let it die to its root today in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you today, Lord, because you are our God, and you don't expect us to have fear. We come before you that everything that has been troubling us, that has continued to put unnecessary fear in us, let it die to its root today in the name of Jesus Christ. King of glory, we know you are God, and you did not create fear for us. We call upon you this day that let the fear in us die to its root in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. The Bible goes further to say, I am with you. Can you please display Isaiah 41 verse 10, please? He said, I am with you. And if God say, I am with you, then who can be against you? So we are going to pray again. That God, I know you are with me. And your word say, a thousand will fall on my left. And one thousand will fall on my right. It is because God is with you. So we are going to pray. That God, I know you are with me. And as long as I know you are with me, nothing will make me fall in the name of Jesus Christ. No power we overcome me in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I know you are with me. And as long as you are with me, I am a conqueror. As long as you are with me, I know I can face all situations in the name of Jesus Christ. I know as you are with me, your power goes along with me in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, for you are with us and you will continue to be with us. We know you are with us and we know your spirit will continue to guide us in all situations, in all circumstances, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. The same verse said, I will strengthen you. Which means, you don't have to depend on your, on your strength. You don't have to depend on your knowledge. You don't have to depend on people or anything around you. All you have to do is to depend on God. Because it is only He, Jehovah, that can strengthen you. And when God is with you, there is nothing that can make you fall. So let us pray that God continue, as I enter into another week, continue to strengthen me in, in the name of Jesus. At my work, continue to strengthen me in the name of Jesus Christ. Concerning what I am doing, continue to strengthen me in the name of Jesus Christ. All we need is the strength of the Almighty God. Yes. Ah, God, continue to strengthen us. In this church, continue to strengthen us, Lord. Continue to help us in every area. We are human beings. We need your strength, Lord, Father. Strengthen us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 
And God even went further. He said, I will help you. Yes. There is not, you don't need help from men. You need help from God. It is God that will direct men to be of help to you. By your own strength, you cannot get help from, from man. A man can promise you something today. Tomorrow you say, I will not do it. But when God says, I will help you, if that one says he's not going to do it, he will raise up another one. Is it not the one that said he can raise stone to worship him? How much more men? So let us pray that God, in anything I lay my hands on, help me in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever I'm going through right now, I need your help in the name of Jesus Christ. At my work, I need your help. In my relationship with you, I need my help, your help. Even in your household, I need your help. It is not easy to raise children. You need God's help. So let us pray for God's help. Father, we just come before you today. Come and help us in every area. In this church law, help us. Help us individually in the name of Jesus Christ. Because helps come only from you. And your help is genuine. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. He said, I will uphold you. If God uphold you, you are, you are more than anything. So let us pray that God will uphold us in every situation, in every circumstance. God will uphold us, Lord. But you have your own part to pay, play also. God, we are asking for you to uphold us, Lord. We know we are sinners. But Jesus Christ died for us. And because Jesus Christ died for us, we know His blood is available for us. That is why we come boldly unto your throne of grace today, Lord. That please uphold us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And now let us close the prayer with Psalm 121, verse 4 to 5. Can you please display it? Psalm 121, verse 4 to 5. It said, Behold, he that keepeth his prey shall neither sleep nor slumber. He that keep a whole nation will not sleep nor slumber and watch more we as individual so we are going to say pray that God will uphold your word because we know you said it that you don't sleep nor slumber concerning me you will mention your name concerning Francis I know you don't sleep nor slumber I come before you today based on your war that anything we are going through you will not sleep nor slumber until we come out victoriously. Thank you Father. We commit today's service into your hand. Let your spirit order our steps in the name of Jesus Christ. King of glory go before us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let every human effort in us, let it not overpower. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Our human effort will not overpower your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your spirit rise up in us today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is good. And all the time. Even as we enter into worship and praise to his mighty name. Let us just open up our hearts to the one who saves. To the king of kings. To the Lord of lords. To the lion of the tribe of Judah. To the ancient of days. To the I am that I am. To the almighty God. To the father of the fatherless. Father Lord, we glorify your holy name. We have come this morning to just cast our crowns before you. We humble ourselves that you might be lifted up in our lives in the name of Jesus. Glorious God, we praise your holy name. There is none like you, Jesus. Somebody lift up a praise this morning. Lift up a praise. Lift up a praise. Don't wait for the music. Just lift up a praise. Say beautiful things to his name. Hallelujah. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship. Oh, be lifted. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and we worship and worship. Oh, be lifted, oh, be lifted above all the gods. We lay our crowns one more time and worship.
worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Always, always. Hallelujah. Are we ready to praise him? Are we ready? All right. Put those hands together. Are we ready to sing a joyful song unto his name? He reigns forever and ever. Hallelujah. I will sing of your mercy and your love, of your goodness and your grace. Hallelujah, I will sing of your mercy and your love, of your goodness and your grace, hallelujah. Can you join me and sing? I will sing of your mercy and your love, of your goodness and your grace. Of your goodness and your grace. Are we ready? Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Glory to your name. I shout it loud. Glory to your name.
first What can't you do? What can't you do? What can't you do? Jesus Hey, name above every other name What can't you change? What can't you change? What can't you change? What can't you change? Jesus You are able You are able Great and mighty God You are able You are able Jesus Hey, you are able, are able Great and mighty God you were able. Hey, say, put your hands together. Put your hands together. How many of us are happy to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? The presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. So relax, dance, smile as we celebrate. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do? What can't you do? Jesus, name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change? What can't you change? Jesus, hey, you are able. You are able. Great and mighty God. You are able.
scripture says that our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly over and above that which we can ask or think or imagine according to the working of his mighty power if you believe God is able shout he is able so whatever it is that your issue is he is able my brother he is able I'm looking at you in particular he is able right I don't know why my you know the spirit of God is connecting with you this morning he is able and very soon he will come through for you Amen. have no fear our God is on the throne and he's at work in the name of Jesus the Bible says that the darkest hour of the night is just a little before morning mm, when it seems very dark the morning the day is about to break your day is going to break in the name of Jesus hallelujah let's celebrate Jesus this morning let's celebrate him the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords the one who is able who is able the one who loves us with an everlasting love hallelujah father we thank you I welcome you to the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this is King's Court of the Redeemed Christian Church of God is a place where our trials give us testimonies amen ah hallelujah so uh, don't worry whatever you are going through the lord has got you amen and because you have come to the courts of the king this morning he will meet with you in a unique way you will not go back the same way you came in the name of jesus as his word comes to you it will meet you at the point of your need it will bring you deliverance it will bring you healing and it will bring you an uplifting in the name of jesus we'd like to welcome those who are worshiping with us for the first time if this is your first time in this assembly we'd like to recognize you wherever you are just wave to me oh hallelujah you're well please let's welcome them let's work king's court people royal household let's welcome them we are glad to see you to show his excellence all you require for life all i require for life god has given me and i know who i am i know who god says i am why he says i am where he says i'm at i know who i am i know who god says i am hey. why he says i am yes where he says i'm at i know who i am i'm walking in power in our face we are frowning like we don't know who you are who we are if you know who you are shout hallelujah. hallelujah and then smile wherever you are jesus has overcome the world don't squeeze your face smile like you have the victory hallelujah our god is good and his presence and power will be manifested in our lives let's trust the lord when you come into the presence of god let there be fullness of joy let the joy enter into your spirit man because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's be seated majestically in his wonderful presence. Thank you, Mass, for being here this morning. We know that the Lord has ordered your steps here. And we trust that the Lord who brought you here, he will meet with you specifically in the name of Jesus. So whatever things you have brought into the presence of God, I know that God is able to handle them. Amen. Amen. I welcome you all once again. Okay, let's settle down. I welcome everyone once again. And I, um, I encourage you this morning to come with open hearts. To come with an expectation. 
Amen. Amen. Don't come just out of tradition. You understand what I'm saying? Come with an expectation because in the presence of God, like I said, there's fullness of joy. If we open up our hearts, the Lord will meet with us. The Bible says that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. So whenever you come to the presence of God, let it be with an expectation. And God will meet you at that very point of your need in Jesus' name. Amen. So do we have testimonies this morning? Do we have something we want to appreciate God? The Lord has done something and we want to give him thanks. Hallelujah. Pastor Ade, I see you. Yes, my ah, Pastor De Umi. Ah. I've got dashed her pastor to this morning. Sister De Umi, thank you. God bless you. Okay. Yes. Um, let's take the microphone there. Pastor Ade, you start. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So sometime last year, I got a contractor to do some renovation in my house. And we signed a contract. I paid 25% of the total amount, which was a huge sum. But somehow, you know, after I signed the contract, it was like scales were removed from my eyes. I knew I entered a one-chance bus. So I didn't, you know, I said, okay, before you start anything in my house, I need you to get the permit from the government. So that kind of, you know, delayed the work. I didn't want anything done on my house without permit because some of these contractors, they will come start something, they become ghosts, you don't see them again. And then your house, you know, is in ruins. Anyway, so the, the permit took time to come, you know. And somehow I was just, I was just not comfortable with the contract. I wanted out of it, but I have signed it, you know. Mm -hmm. If I opt out of it, I'm most likely to lose my deposit. Mm -hmm. So the devil entered him. He represented my check a second time. You know, there's these apps in the bank, in the bank in banking industry. If you have a check, for instance, you just take a photograph of it, mm -hmm. they will pay you. But you know, you still have the original of the check. Yeah, that's right. This man, he, he just confirmed my suspicions. My check, <laughs> <laughs> he went back to the bank Sorry. and recashed it, yeah. He took another huge chunk from my account. I saw my balance, I'm like, what? What is this? Ah, you know, I cried from my office until I got to the bank, I was weeping. Gosh. You know, I'm like, I work hard, I don't have a man to help me. You, you know, this is my hard-earned money. And somebody is just taking it like that. So I called my son. He, went, he started looking through my account. He said, Mommy, it's like a check like this had gone out before. The same, the, check same number, check number. the same check number. You know, that one I said, OK. So he, he did a screenshot, sent it to me. So I got to the bank. I made my complaint. They gave me an incident number, you know. So and they said I sh should be calling. The following day, I called, and then they said, no updates. The third day, I called, no updates. The fourth day, I called, no updates. It was now weekend. Uh, I called a sister in Christ, who is a lawyer. I said, please, I need you to write me a letter to the bank. It looks like these people don't know the damage that this thing is doing to their image. You know, because I have, I, in fact, I didn't call the contractor. I, my, my business was with a bank. Mm -hmm. So... This sister helped me to a beautiful lawyer, my God. They are intelligent lawyers, <laughs> you know. Thank God she's also a Christian. So she wrote this letter on Sunday night. I looked for, I went into their website. I looked for the person in charge of media because he will be more aggressive in protecting the image of the bank than any other department. I just, I sent the email to her. By Monday morning at about 9 a.m., <laughs> I got a call from the manager in the bank saying, oh, they're investigating this case, you know, and that please, you know. Five minutes after I dropped my phone, my alert was reversed. <laughs> you don't get the alert. Don't win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. Hmm. Praise God. You know, that morning when I, when I got the phone call, I was already at the police station because I wanted a case against this contractor, a criminal case. So I was there, you know, I, and then I 
fight my case and you know with the police and all of that. What I'm into is the fact that God has given me an out, you know, a, a, a way to get out of this contract <laughs> that I really contract. never wanted to get into. And the truth is this: even when I went into that contract, brethren, let's be sensitive as believers. When I went there, you know, the guy who came to market this product to me, very intelligent. I just loved him. You know, he talked smooth. You know, somehow I was the leader. And I didn't. So anyway, I immediately made up my mind to go on with the contract. By the time, the day I got there, they, because I had talked so well about this salesperson, they invited him to the office just because I was coming. And then as I drove out of the office, I saw that even when I was there, my spirit was like, this guy is no longer here. He's no longer here. And as I was driving out, I also saw him drive out. I said... You know, I said, do I go and cancel this check? My life, I was like, oh, I have been thinking of doing this thing. Let me just let it go. God spoke to me. And God is a merciful God. He has given me an avenue to opt out of it on the ground of crime, of fraud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let me just comment on that quickly. People of God, wisdom is profitable to direct, all right? And it's important for us to understand how things rule. Pastor Adi, I'm surprised. You mean with this yourself face, you went to a police station? Oh. Eh? I thought you would just be like, hey, I hand him into the hands of God. <laughs> so when you get here, don't be handing people all to God, though. Go the right way, sincerely. Anybody, see, we, whenever we come here, we think that ah, everybody's good and it's not true. Here in this environment, there are evil people who want to take, you know, they want to capitalize on your immigrant mentality, you understand? So don't leave everything for God. God wants us to do certain things, isn't that so? Uh -huh. Because I thought you say she'll get into the house and she'll be praying in tongues and say God should take control completely. Praise the Lord for that deliverance. So the initial deposits they gave you back. The second one. Immediately, okay. Mm -hmm. So what is the bank giving you compensatory payments? See, Baba, yes, <laughs> Siba. Please pursue it. Yes, compensatory um, uh, payments. Because uh, why would they allow that? And then even after you reported, they ought to have uh, made a move. Please connect with people who know what's going on here. Oh. Mm -hmm. Lawyers are important people to know. Yeah. So give us that lawyer's address because she's. Uh, I'm always having <laughs> something to lawyer about. <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. <laughs> Study. Okay, sir. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for his goodness and his mercies over my household for how far he has brought us. Um, specifically this morning, I'm thanking God for my mother. She's a year older today. Hallelujah. I thank God for good health and sound mind because I remember when we lost my dad last year, it really affected my mom. And we're just praying, you know, sometimes when husbands die, before you know it, wife too will pass on. And we're praying to God that God, you let her live to eat the fruit that my father couldn't wait to eat. And I thank God that she's still alive and she's healthy, celebrating her day today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord will keep her with long life. He will satisfy her. Amen. He will lengthen her days in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I just want to, um, I want to thank God that I think it was, I think it was two two weeks ago. I got my G one. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's G one, not G two. G one, only G one. Only the G one. Yeah, I just I just thank God because, um, you know, like, um, it took me many tries to get it. But by God's grace, I was able to get it, and that's that's what I'm thankful for. All right, hallelujah. That's why he's thankful. It took him several tries to get it, but God is faithful, and okay. he didn't give up. That's the most important thing. Yes. Okay, let me just add this one. I want to th thank God because God is mindful of my family. Um, last week, um, God used someone in this church to give my family a pleasant surprise. Hallelujah. It was a massive one for my family mm. that we are still trying to come out of it. Mm. And it's my prayer that God will water that family. Amen. He will remember them for good. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless you for these, your children, 
who have remembered to come back to give you thanks. Lord, your word says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Father God Almighty, by reason of the testimonies that these ones have given, we ask, O oh God, that, Lord, you will perfect all that concerns them in the name of Jesus. Father, this morning, by reason of your mighty power, I speak wholeness to their lives. Every area that they have testified about, Father God, you will make yourself strong on their behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, there will be no reversal. Father God, all those things that are in motion as touching your daughter, Pastor Adesua. Father God, you will complete that issue and you will refund all that has gone forth from her in the name of Jesus. Father, for your, for your daughter, Dewumi, we ask, oh God, as touching your blessing upon their lives, it shall make them rich and add no sorrow with it in Jesus' name. For the life of her mother, I ask, oh God, that you will preserve her and keep her in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, that the number of her, of her days you will fulfill in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your son, Eri Feolua, who's also given thanks on, um, um, on account of the G1. We ask, Father God, that you will put ease in the, in the next stages of the journey. The next levels shall be easier in Jesus' name. Father God, we cover them all with the blood of Jesus. And we ask, O oh Lord Almighty, that more and greater things they will yet testify about in Jesus' name. And for those sitting down here, Father God, who are connecting to these testimonies, we ask, Father God Almighty, that you will perfect all that concerns them as well in the name of Jesus. Your glory will break forth in their lives. Your hand will rest upon every soul for good. Next week, more and more testimonies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sister Chichi, as she was giving that testimony, you were the one who came to my mind. Please come. Um, Sister Chichi, about two years ago, she, her dad passed. And sometime this year, her mom passed as well. So when you were saying that, I, you know, she just came to my mind. I want us to stretch forth our hands to pray for her. I want us to stretch our hands to pray for her. That the Lord will give her and her siblings a covenant of long life. That sickness will not find a place in their home. That the devil will not oppress them. That for each one of those children that are left behind, that the Lord will be a son and a shield for them. That he will give unto them grace and his glory. In the name of Jesus, he will uphold them with the right hand of his righteousness. He will sustain them by his mercy. In the name of Jesus. The scripture says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then will the Lord take me up. That the Lord will take them up. He will bear them up on his hands in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that the hand of the Lord will rest upon each one of them. His eyes of mercy will be upon them. That he will satisfy them also with long life. That the number of their days they will fulfill. That if there be any covenant in operation that will not allow them to fulfill the number of days. We, we, we will turn it around this day. Father God, we revoke it in the name of Jesus Christ. And we enforce, Father God Almighty, the covenant of long life. A covenant of well-being. The covenant of grace upon them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Because you will do beyond what we have asked you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for her. Thank you for your daughter, Chichi. Thank you for her siblings as well. We ask, Father God, that your hand will rest upon them in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that your mercy will garrison their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. That you will keep their going out and their coming in. That as they move up and down trying to put things together for the, uh, for the burial, we ask, Lord, you will take control in Jesus' name. And beyond this, Father God, let them experience you as their parents once again in Jesus' name. We ask, Father God Almighty, that you will manifest as father. You will manifest as mother towards them in the name of Jesus. Because we know that you are the mother too. You said, can a mother forget her suckling child? If it were possible, then you go. Even if it were possible, I, God, will not forget you. The Lord will not forget you in Jesus' name. The hand of the Lord will uphold you. I pray the comfort of the Lord, the comfort of the Holy Spirit upon you, upon your siblings, upon your entire household and family in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that the Lord will sustain you. He will help you. He will comfort your hearts. He will give you joy once again 
in Jesus' name. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you, love. We know both her parents were Christians, and we know they've gone to rest with the Lord. But that does not always take away the feeling of um, emptiness and grief we feel. As human beings, we always will. But I know that the Lord, the Holy Spirit, will comfort them and help them in Jesus' name. Are we all invited to the funeral? Have you told us about it? Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we have the announcements? Thank you. Welcome once again to Church Kings Court. Today is Sunday, April 7th, and we're glad you're here on this wonderful Thanksgiving Sunday. I hope you brought your dancing shoes, because today, Sunday, April 7th, is Thanksgiving Sunday for the month of April. As you dance, please remember what you're thankful for. If you enjoyed last week's... And good morning once again, King's Court. Today is Sunday, April 14th, and we're glad you're here in King's Court, Branton. And I'd like to especially welcome all first-time guests in King's Court. If you're here for the first time, please wait after service so that we can welcome you. But if you're watching online, click on the link in the live chat to fill out our welcome form. And as I'm sure you know by now, our mission in King's Court is to raise Christ ambassadors and expand God's kingdom. So please take some time out of your day to do just that. And our services in King's Court are as usual, starting at 9.30, which search the scriptures. We then move into the encounter at 10.15 a.m. And on Wednesdays, we have Living Waters at 7 p.m. On Fridays, we have a weekly prayer meeting, also at 7 p.m. online. Please make sure to join all these services. And starting this Wednesday on April 17th, we'll be having our 40 for 10 prayer programs. And we should pray for 40 minutes over 10 days. So please join every day at 7 p.m. And I hope that God answers your prayers. And next week on Sunday, April 21st, is our Friends and Family Sunday for the month of April. So please invite someone to church and get ready for a day of praise and thanksgiving. And on Sunday, May 12th, is our special Mother's Day service. Women, you just need to come to service and look pretty because that's your day. All the men in King's Court will be running the service. So please wait after today's service to meet and plan. And on Sunday, May 19th, we'll be celebrating Anointing Sunday, the day that the Spirit descended on the disciples. This will be a very special and holy service, so you don't want to miss it. Well, that's it for our weekly announcements, King's Court. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next week. Goodbye. Shall we all rise for worship? Hallelujah. Amen. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. Father, we worship you this morning. Praises will never cease from our lips, O oh God. Because that's what we've been created to do. We've been created to worship. So we lift up our worship to you this morning. Yes, Lord. Down at your feet, oh Lord, is the most high place. In your presence, Lord, 
I seek your face. I seek your face. Down at your feet, oh Lord, is the most high place. In your presence, Lord, I seek your face. I seek your face, for there is no, for there is no higher calling, no greater honor than to bow and kneel before you. Oh, I'm amazed, I'm amazed at your glory and praise. By your mercy, O oh Lord, I live to worship, for there is no no greater honor than to bow and kneel before you. I'm a man. Where is the you are 
Our Father and our God, we praise you. We adore you. We honor you. For you alone are God. Besides you, O God, there is no other. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of sonship. That we can call upon you, our Father, and you answered us. Jehovah, we are grateful. Blessed be your holy name, O God. Thank you, Lord, for your presence already in our midst. Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, speak to us. Let your word, O God, bring about salvation this morning. Let your word bring about healing. Let your word bring about deliverance. Let all of us possess our possessions in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated in his wonderful presence. God bless you, Levites. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when Mama came to the pulpit, she was talking about the presence of God. Presence of God. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Then Sister Chichi took the mic and started to sing and ministered also the presence of God. I never told these people that my topic is the presence of God. So please, if I were you, I would be attentive. Just be attentive to the word of God this morning. The word of God will do you good in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brethren, let's open our Bibles to... Exodus chapter 33. Exodus 33. We will read verses 12 to 16. I'm going to be having a lot of Bible passages. Let's just be attentive. God will speak your own word to you in the name of Jesus. He said, Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you said to me, Bring up these people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight. And consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. The presence of God brings about rest. Hallelujah. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except if you go with us? So we shall be separate your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. From this passage, brethren, we know that there is so much to gain from the presence of God. What distinguishes us as Christians is the presence of God in our lives, the presence of God that we carry. You, know, you see here, Moses is saying, how will the people, how will the world know that we are yours? How can we be separate from them? The thing that separates us from the world as Christians is the presence of God that we carry. The Buddhists, they pray, they fast. The Muslims, they pray, they fast. They give alms, they do all of the kind deeds, religious rites and all of that. But the thing that distinguishes us as believers from the rest is the presence of God that we carry. Brethren, I want to encourage us this day to have the presence of God. Crave for the presence of God continuously. Not only when we come to church. Everywhere we go, let's carry the presence of God. Of God. There's nothing as glorious as a child of God having the presence of God anywhere we go. The secret of success, victory, and unusual exploits is in the presence of God. Do we want to overcome great problems? We need the presence of God. 
when the presence of God envelops us, when people ought to say no to our demands, they will say yes, hallelujah. Yeah. You see, when, when, when God said he was no longer going to follow the people, the children of Israel, what did they do? They started to mourn. It was bad news. It is bad news not to have the presence of God. Tell your neighbor, it is bad news not to hear, have the presence of God. They mourned. That same Exodus chapter 33, verses 1 to 4, I need us to read it. He said, then the Lord said to Moses, depart, you know. He said, depart and go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land which I swore to Abraham. He said, yeah, I promised you this land. Go with your people. To, the, to your descendants, I will give it. And I will send my angel. They were not satisfied with the company of the angel. He said, I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites and the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst. He says, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. He said, and then when the people heard this bad news, it is bad news not to have the presence of God. I said, why is God saying here that he will not go with them? He said, they are stiff-necked people. So disobedience can take away the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. They were not satisfied with having angelic presence. A sleep is dangerous without the presence of God. Going out of the house as a believer is dangerous without the presence of God. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence, which mama was quoting and quoting and quoting, I'm like, did she look into my, my salmon notes? In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The question I want to ask us is, do we have the presence of God? Have we lost his presence? More than anything else, brethren, Let's crave for the presence of God in our lives. He makes the difference. No wonder King David, who defeated nations, he cried. He had sinned against God, impregnated another man's wife, and killed the, 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 the husband of the, of the woman. I remember that woman always with bats. Because, because David saw her in the bathroom. So I used to confuse Beersheba with Bathsheba. But since that time, Bath is bathroom. Bathsheba. Hallelujah. He was such a powerful king. He cried out. He cried out in Psalm 51 verse 11. He said, do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. That was his secret. That was the secret of David. Do we desire that secret? That was the, sec the presence of God was the secret of David. It was so much so that even as a kid, all powerful Saul, in fact, Saul was so powerful that God and Prophet Samuel had to plan how to deal with him in order for him not to kill the next king that was being anointed. God had to plan with uh, Saul and say, take a sacrifice. Pretend that you are going to sacrifice because this man is a wicked king. That wicked king feared David because God was with David. He didn't want to lose the presence of God. He had sinned. He realized it. I say, he, say, he cried out and said, Father, cast me not away from your presence. 
I want to, in the, in, in the sermon of today, I want to look at four levels of the presence of God. Number one is God is everywhere. Everybody knows that. Everybody says omniscient God, you know, he's everywhere. The Bible tells us in Psalm 139, verses 7 to 12, I'll read it, so that you truly know that God is everywhere. It says, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? It says, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness <laughs> shall, fall on, shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are, you know, God is everywhere. Is that the kind of presence you want? Anyway, yeah, that's a level of God's presence. We are going deeper into, you know, the presence. Another level of presence is the abiding presence of God. Because you are a child of God, the presence of God abides with you. You know, when we gather together like this, in his name, the Bible tells us that he is there with us. When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because he is there with us. And then he has said in his word, he said, Matthew 20, 28, 20, he said, ah, Lo, I am with you always. So, that abiding presence, because of the fact that we are believers, he's there with us. His presence is abiding with us. When we gather together, Matthew 18, 20, we just quote it, but some of us may not know where it is in the Bible. It says, you know, <laughs> Matthew, 20, Matthew 18, 20, it says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So that abiding presence, you know, generally, you know, that kind of presence, there's that level. Hallelujah. We desire that level. It's a good level too. Hallelujah. Let's go deeper into another level of his presence. The active personal presence of God. When God intervenes, you are in a situation, God just comes in and intervenes. Like in the case of the three Hebrew brothers in Babylon, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were thrown into the fiery furnace. And what happened? God appeared in their situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Daniel was thrown into the den of lions. What, happe what happened? God appeared and delivered him. That is another presence. You know, when we are in trouble, God just intervenes. That is a presence. That is a level of presence that we will also desire. I've mentioned three now. Omniscient presence of God. God is everywhere. Abiding presence of God. An active personal presence of God. That is God just intervening in critical moments in your life. The presence I want to dwell on this morning is the accompanying everywhere we go. Where we are in trouble, we are not in trouble. Anywhere we go, the accompanying presence of God. When God is on the driver's seat of your life, we will talk like Elijah and say, God, before whom I stand, present continuous term. God, before whom I stand. We will also be like Peter and Paul. Paul, handkerchiefs were from his body, healed the sick. The shadow of Peter healed the sick. He, they carried the presence of God. Like the presence of God went with the Israelites. Exodus 13, 21 says, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and by night. By day and by night, we are carrying the presence of God. It is not only when we are in church. Hallelujah. 
we live here, the presence of God is with us. Anywhere we go, we enter a place, the people we know that a child of God has visited. So shall it be for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. The presence of God was with Joseph. That same presence. Though his brethren sold him to slavery, the presence of God was with him. He says in Genesis 39 verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. David also, as I mentioned before, 1 Samuel 18, 12. He says, now Saul was afraid. Now Saul was afraid of David because what? The Lord was with him. We are this kind of presence is where God is in full control. He's in the driver's seat. In the day, you are carrying his presence. In the night, you are carrying his presence. You are asleep, his presence is there. If I when people are saying witches are pursuing, you are the one pursuing witches. Hallelujah. Yeah. You will not be oppressed in your dreams. In the name of Jesus. So we'll just look at... I desire to always have the presence of God in my life. I know that we all desire that. But we're going to look at a few conditions. It's not an exhaustive list. We just look at a few conditions that we bring in the presence of God. During the Bible study this morning, another point came to me. I will just mention it, you know guiding our spirits. The teacher was talking about guiding our spirits. You know, not allowing fear, you know, to overcome us. You know, when there is fear, there can't be presence of God. Guiding our spirits, being mindful of the companies that we keep. Hallelujah. That's a bonus point that I got from the uh, search the scriptures of this morning. Hallelujah. So I had, I had 10 points, so that makes it 11 points. Hallelujah. Let's be part of the search the scriptures always because there's always something to learn. Amen. Amen. One condition we're going to consider here is holiness. Hallelujah. Holiness. These two people that we talked about in the Bible, David and, and uh, Joseph, they, they were not perfect people, but they were sincere. Hallelujah. Holiness. We may not be, we are not, we are not there yet, but let's be sincere. You know, there may be a habit you are trying to deal with. A, hab, a terrible, you know it is a terrible habit. Be open, just be sincere. Talk to God and say, Father, help me. I don't like it. Help me to overcome it. You don't need to cover it. That's, you know, holiness. Being sincere. Not perfect yet, but just be sincere. David sinned against God. And he cried out for forgiveness, for mercy. He suffered the consequences. He lost the child out of that, that, that resulted from the, you know, the, the sin and all, the adulterous uh, relationship. But he cried out. He cried out. You, we are not perfect, but brethren, let's learn to be sincere. Let's just learn to be sincere. Like what we read in uh, Exodus 33, verse 3, God said, I will not go with you because you are stiff-necked. So if we should learn not to be stiff-necked. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Let us learn to be holy. It says in Psalm 24, verses 3 to 5, Who may ascend unto the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceit fully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. So, Holiness is a requirement if we truly desire the presence of God. A clean, clear conscience. 
you know, permanently making it right with God. Just that childlike thing, you know, Daddy, I'm sorry. You know, don't, don't wait. Don't master your sin. Don't get to the level where, you know, you do it, it no longer pricks your conscience. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. God, we, have, we can't do anything extra. Jesus Christ has paid the price on the cross of Calvary. We have that imputed righteousness in us when we give our lives to Christ. But the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So every day we press towards the goal. We press towards the goal. We stand upon the imputed righteousness of Christ and pursue righteousness. Hallelujah. Number two condition is proven and deep humility. Proven and deep humility. Psalm 138 verse 6 says, Though the Lord is on high, though he is high, he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. We can't carry the presence of God if we are proud. There needs to be humility. We need to learn humility. Isaiah 57 verse 15 tells us, For thus says the high and the lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit. He says he dwells with those who have humble spirits, who are humble, who are contrite in hearts. He dwells with them. So brethren, let's learn humility. When a man is full of himself, he's empty of God. Hallelujah. Is it number three condition is praise and worship. Let's learn to praise God. Let's learn to worship him. Psalm 22 verse 3 says, But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Adesua. Hallelujah. Put your name there. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of Adesua. So God inhabits our praises. If we want his presence, we must learn to praise him. You know. Psalm 100, 1 to 4 talks about praising God also. John 4:23. He says, but the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeking, is seeking such to worship him. So our worship triggers the presence of God. Remember King Jehoshaphat, when they were going to war, all he did was to bring singers, people to sing. And that brought down the presence of God, and God gave them victory. So praising God, worshiping God, brings the presence of God. Then the word of God. The word of God. The Bible tells us in John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word was God. So have the word. Read the word. Job said, I esteemed the word of God more than my necessary food. Brethren, one way to go about it is don't allow food into your mouth until you read the word of God. Hallelujah. And it has been made so easy. We all carry our phones with us. You are about to eat, and you, forget, you suddenly remember that you have not read his word. What do you do? You open your phone now. Abby, 
Just read one verse and memorize it. <laughs> and then you begin to eat. Amen. Let the word of God dwell richly in us. Amen. Sacrifice. Sacrifice your time. Sacrifice your resources. Solomon did something like that. And the presence of God came. First Kings 3 verses 4 to 5. And now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared. Do you want God to appear? After he sacrificed, what did God do? What did he do? We just read it. The God appeared. Sacrifice. Sacrifice your time. Sacrifice your resources. Sacrifice your gifts. You may be in church here, you know how to sing. Come out, join the Levites. Sing. Praise the Lord. The love of God. Another condition that can bring the presence of God. John chapter 14 verse 23 tells us, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him. And then what happens? He says, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Brethren, let's honor God. James 4, it says, Draw near to me, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. We all, lo we all love to be where we are loved, isn't it? God has made us in his image. If we do love that, then truly, God wants to be where he is loved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Another condition we'll try to fulfill is to be obedient. Obedience. Saul was told to go and annihilate the, the people of Amalek, the Amalekites. What did he do? He decided to take some. He spared the king. You know? That was not the instruction. And, and Samuel went to him. He says, has God, I mean, First Samuel 15, 22, has God, has the Lord as great delight in bond offerings and sacrifices? As in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. No matter the sacrifice we make, no matter the prayers we pray, it will not make a difference if we live a life of rebellion, a life of disobedience. Let's learn to be obedient in order to enjoy the presence of God. Another condition is, I mean, it's a, it's a long one. <laughs> the prayer life. I desire to have the presence of God. I desire to have the presence of God. Healthy prayer life. Let's give time to pray. Praying. Praying always. Pray without ceasing. Let's give time to constant fellowship with God. Jesus Christ is our example. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 9, verses 29 to 30, how that he prayed. And after he prayed, heaven came down. Moses and Elijah, they appeared. We can pray, and heaven truly will come down. His presence will come down. Hallelujah. Then let us not forsake the gathering of ourselves together. Healthy congregational fellowship. Let us not neglect, not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. The Bible tells us where two or three are gathered together, there he is in their midst. You know, let our heart be also, let's also have the same heartbeat with God. What is the heartbeat of God? He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. How do you bring about repentance? By evangelism. Hallelujah. Let's be involved. The weather is getting better now. Let's speak to people. 
let this weather not go without us talking to somebody about the kingdom of God. The last point is that we should be dedicated to going all the way with God. We should have heaven, we should live with heaven consciousness every day. Going all the way with God. That in this journey, I will not fall by the wayside. In this journey to heaven, I will not fall by the wayside. Because surely, according to Second Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 11, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned off. Since this, see, therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Every day, let's determine to live our lives in holy conduct and godliness. As we do all of this, we carry the presence of God. The presence of God brings speed. The presence of God brings recovery of lost grounds. The presence of God gives us preservation. The presence of God protects. Brethren, let's desire the presence of God and determine in our hearts to fulfill the conditions that can bring about the presence of God in our lives. Let's be on our feet, brethren, as we pray to God. Let's pray and say, Father, and say, Father, give me a passion for your presence and grace to remain in your presence. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Father, give me a passion for your presence. Give me a passion for your presence. Grace to remain in your presence. Father, give me a passion for your presence. Grace to remain in your presence, O oh God. Give me a passion for your presence. In whatever way I have failed you, Jehovah, I ask for your mercy, O oh God. Give me a passion for your presence and grace to remain in your presence. All the days of my life, give me a passion, O oh God, for your presence. Help me to remain in your presence all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus, thank you, almighty God. Blessed be your holy name forevermore. In Jesus' name. We have prayed. Another prayer point is, Father, draw me close to you. Draw me close to you. Deliver me from the distractions of this life. Draw me close to you, O God. Father, draw me close to you, O God. Father, deliver me from the distractions, O God. Distractions that will remove your presence from my life. Father, draw me close to you, O God. Father, draw me close to you. Draw me close to you, O oh God. Draw me close to you, Jehovah. Remove distractions from my life. Everything that will distract me, O oh God, from your presence. Father, remove them from my life. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thank you, mighty God. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Brethren, the first condition for us to begin to enjoy that personal presence of God is by surrendering our lives to Him. Being born again, believe in your heart, confess the Lordship of Jesus. If there's anyone in our midst, you have not made that decision, please just signify, raise up your hand, and then we will pray with you. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. We are all saved. We have received forgiveness. 
Let's therefore again commit ourselves into the able hands of God and say, Father, let your presence not depart from me. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh God. Father, cast me not away from your presence, O oh God. Lord, cast me not away from your presence, Baba. Father, cast me not away from your presence. Oh, Jehovah, in the day and the night, let me carry your presence. Glorify your name, O oh God, in every area of my life. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name forevermore. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. We worship you. We exalt your name. We honor you. We adore you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Our Father and our God, we praise you. We adore you, O oh God. We honor you. We glorify you, Father, because there is no one else like you. Thank you, Lord, for who you are in our lives. We desire your presence. Lord, we receive passion for your presence in the name of Jesus. We receive grace to remain in your presence all the days of our lives in the name of Jesus. Everything and anything in our life, oh God, that will not allow your presence. Father, we ask that you be merciful unto us. Let the Holy Spirit, O oh God Almighty, abide with us and guide us. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn away everything, anything that is not of you in our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Blessed be your holy name forevermore. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Have we been blessed today? Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Offering time. Hallelujah. We, we understand, you know, we read from the Bible already how Solomon gave a thousand bond offerings and God appeared. Brethren, it's a time for us to sacrifice our resources to the Almighty God for the work of the kingdom. Let's send our, make our email transfers to kcbpay at gmail.com. If you don't have that already set up in your account, you can um, put your, ask for envelopes, just signify to the ushers. They will give you envelopes. You can put your cash, you can put your check. Hallelujah. And remember to write your names at the back of the envelopes. Amen. Let's do that joyfully as the Levites will lead us in, in choruses. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we ready to give cheerfully? I have confidence in you, Jesus. I have confidence in you. I have confidence in you Every time and every day I have confidence in you Jesus I have confidence in you Jesus I have confidence in you
For the gifts of your children father god for everyone who has given this morning whether by interact transfer or physically here i ask heavenly father god that your blessing will rest upon each person in the name of jesus Amen. the blessing of obedience your word says if you are willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land we pray, Father God, that everyone who has willingly and obediently given today, let there be a release of the good of the land unto them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask, Father Lord Almighty, that every blessing that attends obedience will attend these lives in the name of Jesus Christ. That blessed shall be their storehouses, blessed shall be their bank accounts, blessed shall be their needing troughs, in the name of Jesus, blessed shall they be in the morning, blessed shall they be in the noontime, and blessed shall they be at night in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, God Almighty, we ask that you will return unto them. Good measure, press down, and shaking, shaking together, and running over, in the name of Jesus Christ. Your children will know no lack. The scripture says, I once was young, but now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed beg for bread. These ones will not beg for bread in Jesus' name. Their seed will not beg for bread in Jesus' name. Amen. You will come through for them at all times in the name of Jesus. We ask, Father, you will receive this offering at our hands. We ask, Father, you will sanctify it, and it shall be used for the enlargement of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. I want us to stretch forth our hands and pray for the woman of God who has blessed us this morning. Let us ask <clears throat> that the Lord will restore virtue unto her. Amen. That he will give unto her, return unto her a hundredfold. In the name of Jesus Christ, that he will fill her once again with his spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, that his word, his presence uh, will continually abide with her. His presence will not depart from her. Are we praying? Are we praying? Let's make sure we're praying. His presence will not depart from her. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, the words she has spoken, they will not stand in judgment against her. That the Lord Almighty will draw her closer. In the name of Jesus, he will perfect all that concerns her. That he will be her strength, he will be her shield. He will be her husband, he will be her strength. In the name of Jesus, Jehovah the mighty provider. He will supply all her needs according to his riches in glory. In the name of Jesus. And at the end of this age, at the close of this dispensation, she will be able to give a good account of her stewardship. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We give you all the praise and the glory. We ask that your presence will continually abide with your daughter. She will manifest your presence. In the name of Jesus, you will draw her deeper, deeper into relationship with you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Have you been blessed today? Yes. Okay, so I want you to raise up your hand and declare great things about your week. The week that starts today. Begin to declare. You see, you are the best prophet of your own life. So begin to declare over your week and say that this week I am blessed in the morning, noon, and night. 
that my going out and my coming in is blessed. The presence of the Almighty God surrounds me. I, am go I will go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before me singing. Everything that I laid my hands upon to do this week shall excel. In the name of Jesus, I will be satisfied with the goodness of the Lord this week. The Lord will come through for me in every imaginable way. I will not lack anything good. I will not lack anything good. The angels of the living God will, will surround me. I am surrounded by favor as with a shield. The glory of the Lord rests upon me in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. So shall it be as you have spoken in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, we thank you and we bless you this day. We thank you, Father God, for another opportunity to fellowship. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, for everything, Lord, you have spoken and dropped into our hearts this morning. Lord, we are grateful. Receive our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, as we depart from this place, we depart not from your presence. Your presence does not depart from us. Father God, let your presence be manifest each and every day of this week in the name of Jesus. Everything that comes from your presence, let it be evident in our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you will go before us this week Amen. and you will make straight everything that is crooked in the name of Jesus. Amen. Cause mountains before us to be made plain in the name of Jesus. Cause every valley to be exalted in the name of Jesus. As your children, oh God, let help arise for us this week in Jesus' name. Amen. We decree and declare that we will not be stranded. Father, Lord Almighty, we will not be stranded. Spiritually, we will not be stranded. In our souls, we shall not be stranded. In our bodies, we will not be stranded. In the name of Jesus. Father God Almighty, we ask that your blessing will rest upon us and abide. That your glory will surround us on every side. You will keep our going out and our coming in. You will command your angels to take charge over us. No weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against us is condemned in the name of Jesus. Amen. We bless you and we give you glory. Lord, on Wednesday we ask you to take control. Bring us, Father God, to study your word. On Friday as we pray, let us have open heavens. And when we come back next Sunday, Father God, let us come with a testimony in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our God. We give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' most excellent name, we have prayed. Shall we share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Turn to someone and say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh -uh. I want a victorious hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Go in victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.